everybody, JC here from Toy News International. And today I'm coming at you with another review. We're going to be taking a look at the brand new Justice League movie 110 scale Batmobile from Mattel. Now even though they list this as uh, being done in 110 scale, this is really made for 112 scale figures or 6 inch figures. So that's how it's billed as. The figure that's included with this is billed as a 6 inch figure. So we'll get it open and see exactly how the scale works, but just wanted to notate that, that that's how it lists on the packaging. So this is the one with all the bells and whistles. This has got electronics, lights, sounds, remote control, video camera, all kinds of stuff. There is a cheaper version of this toy that Mattel did that's cost about 60 bucks. Doesn't have any of the electronics or anything. And that is available at places like Amazon and, and Toys R Us and stuff. But this one is the big one, costs about $250, comes in the special collector type packaging. So on the front of the box, it's made to look like Batman's armor. So you've got his bat symbol on his chest and then armor and utility belt down here. Got the name of the toy up here. And this is actually a slip case, which you can lift off, which I'll show you in a second. But on one side of this, you've got, just shows you images of the toy. And then like on the front, it shows you the front of the Batmobile. And then on the back, it shows you the back of the Batmobile. And then on this side, it just shows you the toy. You got kind of the slip cases cut, so it shows you the inner box a bit there. And on the back of the slip case, it actually shows the, the Batmobile. And this is done so that stores can display the box either from the front so that the box is tall or from the back so that it's not as tall and doesn't take up as much height on the shelf. So it really gives the stores more variety in how they want to put this on the shelf and have it displayed. And then the box itself measures about, let's see, about 24 inches in length and just a little bit over 18 inches in width. And the diameter and the height of the box is this way is about a little over 10 inches. So it's definitely a big box and it's very heavy too, I guess because this has all the electronics. This version has all the electronics, so it's definitely not a light box. I mean, I can definitely pick it up, but it definitely has some weight to it. So anyway, you can then lift this slip case off here the slides off and then on the front of the box and the back you've got the same thing just the bat symbol here and then on the sides it shows you again the the side of the batmobile basically so it's kind of like you're seeing it the front back sides so it's kind of showing off the toy like that all right so let's get this open and take a look at what's inside Okay, now once you've cut the tape down here on the bottom, the way this opens is actually kind of cool. This uh, top portion of the box just lifts up. You slide it off, and then the actual Batmobile itself is displayed on the on this bottom portion of the box. So, and then the, all the other stuff that comes with it is inside here. So it's kind of cool. You know, when you take it out, it's almost set up to be displayed. And it's kind of interesting because you can see like these plastic pieces are actually made to look like rocks. This is just plastic. And then the, the surface of this kind of looks like maybe what the bat cave would look like. So I think that's what they were going for is this is kind of like parked in the bat cave. Now it's attached to this actual cardboard piece so it's not going to fall off when you first take it out of the packaging. You'll need to snip it so that it comes off of this. And then they've also, if you want to get to the the other stuff that comes with it you just open it up here in the back it just pops open and then this is for support but this one will slide out and this is where all your accessories and everything are included and just to go into a little further detail on this little platform thing they included so the way this works is there are these little white things that stick out and to release the batmobile from this you just you lift up this piece and from the underside you turn these and it basically these are locked into place and when you turn it it unlocks them and you have these little uh, black things that kind of go over this so basically what it comes down to is if you wanted to use this as a display piece for your batmobile um, which you might maybe you can actually put it back on here it may take a little work to get it back on here but essentially these you know there's holes on the bottom of the batmobile 
and these little uh, white things will plug into those to lock it into place so it won't fall off. This is kind of at a slant so you know you would probably if you do want to display your Batmobile on this cardboard thing which kind of looks like the Batcave or something you probably want to lock it into place so it doesn't fall off. Okay so here's a look at the Batmobile along with all the other contents that are included with this. So first of all you do get a little instruction book that shows you how everything works. Then you get a charger for the battery that's included. This is the battery that powers the Batmobile. It's a 9.9 .9 volt battery and so you get a charger and the battery. Then you get these uh, pieces that uh, snap onto the back of the Batmobile and then these are the weapons that come with it. You get three different types of uh, machine type guns and then you get this rocket launcher. And then the final thing is, for the Batmobile itself is the solution that I guess you pour in that creates the exhaust in the back. And then finally you do get a six inch scale Justice League movie Batman figure. And I gotta say this actually is much more detailed and has a bit more articulation than I was expecting. Now we'll look at this figure in more detail in a bit. Okay, now the very first thing you're probably going to want to do when you get this open is start charging your battery. Now according to the instructions, they say this takes about 30 minutes to fully charge. And when you plug it in, and basically what you do is you take the charger, you plug it into the wall, just a normal wall socket, and then you plug this uh, piece into this, and it should uh, slip in and click into place and then you'll see a, a red LED light um, when it's when it's not charged and then it'll be green when it is charged and again they say it takes about 30 minutes to fully charge this they don't say how long the battery actually lasts and that probably will vary from battery to battery and over time now one thing they do warn you about with the battery when when you have used it up it's going to be very warm when you take it out of here and you want to let it cool down for about 20 minutes before you actually start charging it they say if you charge it while it's hot it will lessen the life of the overall battery so just something to be wary of and and I would highly recommend that you read through all the instructions before you actually start using this and everything. Now the next thing you're probably going to want to do is download the app that you will use to control this on your smartphone. So I've got my iPhone here. You can download this through the Apple Store or through Google Play. And so once you do that, then that's how you'll use it to control it. You just go to the store and you type in Batmobile RC controller and it should come up. It wasn't hard to find. And then you just plug it in and it'll look for, you want to make sure you have the power on and everything and it'll look to set up the link with it and everything. It's pretty then while your battery is charging you can start putting the pieces there's a few pieces that you have to attach so you've got these back wings that you put on and so you've just got these holes here on the top and you've got these little pegs here on the pieces and you just snap them into place and they should pop in And then you have the weapon. So you've got the rocket launcher, which goes here on the front. And there's, you just match the little uh, square peg with the hole here and just pop it in. And then you've got this larger gun turret that will click here on the uh, co-pilot seat. So you can only fit one figure in here because this side of the cockpit is made for this cannon. And you just slide it down. There's a little hook here and you just slide this down. And again, it should click into place and this will elevate up and down and then finally you have these smaller cannons and you've got one for the left side and one for the right side and the left one will only fit in the left side and the right one will only fit in the right side and so you just push those down and again they should just snap into place and that's really it as far as assembly goes for the Batmobile. So the detailing on this thing is not too bad I like the sculpting detail the paint applications are not that extensive it definitely looked more detailed when we saw it the early prototype at Toy Fair back in February so it's not as detailed as that really don't have much in the way of paint applications. You just have that kind of uh, grayish brown plastic like we've seen with previous Batmobiles that Mattel has done. You do have a little bit of paint applications like here on the missiles and then back here like on this piping you've got some yellow paint and some yellow here and you've got some decals or I, I think these are decals. Yeah these look like they're actual decals not painted and so you've got some decals there and here. So you got a little bit of detailing and even like on the weapons 
and you got some darker black here on the guns and stuff so not bad looking it's just when you look at go back and look at the early prototype that they showed at toy fair it definitely doesn't look quite as nice as that and then on the front here again you got some paint detail on the actual missiles here and on this side you pretty much have the same kind of paint details with the yellow on the back here and on the missiles and stuff and you got some lighter silver here on these engine parts that are kind of exposed here on the side so you get a little bit of paint detail there it definitely looks like metal parts there so not too bad and then you've got these bullets these you know these are kind of like gatling type guns and so you've got these are supposed to be the bullets that are feeding into the gun and this is done with just kind of a black rubber type material and then here's a look at the batmobile from the back in this exhaust port this is where the smoke will come out and it lights up and then to get into the cockpit you just lift this up this piece up you can kind of grab it by the windshield here and you do have some clear translucent plastic for the actual windshield here on the front and then you just lift it up and this is where you set the figure and the steering wheel turns and again i'll show you that in a minute and not a lot of paint detail in here you got a little bit of yellow paint for some buttons here and you got some nice texturing on the actual seat and everything and there's some lights in here as well i believe but overall you know it's pretty basic in there as far as paint applications go and the wheels are actually done with rubber treads they look like they're plastic but they actually are made with a rubber tape material and you even have some nice detailing with these little uh, side platforms on, on the batmobile with these little vents here the grating it would have been cool if they'd included some pegs so that you could actually stand some figures on the side of the Batmobile. Now, if you want to activate the exhaust function on this, you have to fill it up with the smoke solution that they include. And once you run out of this, I guess you could go, this is probably the same kind of stuff that you put into like fog machines and stuff like you use on Halloween. But again, they do include this and it's called a smoke solution. And if you're uh, a younger viewer, you might want to get your parents' help before you handle this. But basically the way this works is you want to just first pop off this uh, panel here. And you might even fill it up before when you're first putting it together before you pop, pop this on. But this will just pop off. And then there's essentially, it's like filling it up with gas. There's this little thing here. It's like a gas cap. And it's made with a rubber tape material. And then once you pop that off, you just open this up and then you just kind of uh, pour it in there and probably just want to give it a good three or four squirts and start yeah about four squirts before it fills up and then once you have it you just pop that closed and then you can pop the little wing piece back on so the Batmobile here measures lengthwise if you count from the tip of these wings down to the front is about just under looks like 24 and a half inches and then the width on this if you count to the widest portion which is here in the back with the wheels is roughly about 16 inches and then the height on this if you count to its highest point which looks to be this cannon that sticks up out of the driver's seat it's going to be a little bit under eight inches Here's a side-by-side -side comparison with the DC Collectibles Batman the Animated Series 6-inch scale Batmobile. Okay, so the Batman figure that's included with this vehicle is listed as a 6-inch scale figure. And as I mentioned at the beginning, this actually has more articulation than I anticipated it would when I first heard about this figure and how it's made specifically to fit in the cockpit and act like it's driving. I thought it would have very limited articulation. And I certainly won't call this a super articulated figure, but again, it's better than what I had anticipated. Now you notice because it's made to fit into the cockpit of the Batmobile, the shoulders are a little more broad than what you would generally see with a Batman figure. But again, I don't think it looks too bad. And I like the paint applications. I like the darker gray. Now this is reminiscent of the version that was released as a Walmart exclusive. Now I don't have that figure so I, I can't tell you which one is actually the better looking figure. But again I don't think it looks bad with the darker gray colors on the outfit. You don't have the texturing on the bat symbol with this one. It is smooth. The bat symbol itself is actually sculpted on the figure but it, you don't have that texturing like you normally see. And then you do have sculpting with the armor pieces and here you've got some texturing sculpted on the chest plate. So I like that and down the legs and everything and you got some metallic gold on the boots and on his utility belt so that looks pretty good and then this version he is wearing the goggles 
So it's not just the regular Batman, and I guess when he's driving the Batmobile, he does have the goggles on. Makes sense. It does have a soft, good cape, which, so it fits into the Batmobile. And then even on the back, you have some sculpting detail and like some paint applications with the gold on these uh, fin pieces on his glove. Now this figure, even though they list it as a six inch figure, actually stands closer to six and three quarter inches. Now here's a comparison with the Multiverse six inch Justice League Batman, the tech suit Batman figure. And you can see these two are about the same height. So again, when I first saw this figure announced, I thought this was gonna be more in scale with like the basic figures but it is in fact pretty much in scale with the multiverse ones, which tend to be taller. Here's a comparison with some other multiverse Justice League movie figures. So we've got the Flash, Superman, and Wonder Woman. Here's a comparison with the Mezco 112 Dawn of Justice Batman and the Mafex Dawn of Justice Batman. So for articulation on this figure, as I mentioned before, it is better than what I expected, especially with the upper body. So you can turn the head to the left and to the right. There's not a whole lot of up and down movement with the head though. Then the arms are attached with your standard ball hands joined at the shoulder. That's about as far out as you can get it. You do have these armor pieces that kind of stick up so it limits some of that movement. You have good rotation there at the shoulder. He has a bicep swivel and then he also has a rotation at the elbow. He does have a single hinged elbow, so he can only bend his elbow about that much. And then he has rotation at the wrist, but no hinges on the hands. You've got an ab crunch joint, so he can crunch down about that much and then look back about that much. And then he has a waist swivel. Now, as far as articulation with the legs and the lower body, it's not that great. You've just got that T-crotch design, so he can't do the splits at all. He can get his leg forward about that much and can do his leg back about that much. He does not have a thigh swivel, only has a single hinged knee, so he can bend his knee about that much and does not have rotation at the knee. And then he has no ankle articulation. And then two peg holes on the bottom of the feet. Okay, and here's a look at the Batman figure that comes with the vehicle and how it looks in the actual cock Pit. and you can see it actually fits in pretty good there he's gripping the throttle over here and he's holding the steering wheel and you're able to close the canopy without any real problem and then here's a look at the 112 collective dawn of justice batman figure from mezco and it too will fit in the cockpit without too much problem not quite as good as the figure that comes with the vehicle but you can definitely get it in there and still close the canopy Here's the Mafex Dawn of Justice Batman figure and it fits in there without any problem and again you can get the canopy closed. Here's the Mattel Multiverse Tech Suit Batman figure and it does fit in there. It does, it's a little bit tighter fit. You have to kind of squeeze the arms in because the arms are wider on this figure, but you can squeeze them in there. And again, you can close the canopy. Here's with rubber type capes, you're gonna have a much more difficult time getting in there. This is the Multiverse Rebirth Batman figure from Mattel and I have not been able to really get it in there because of that rubber cape. You could probably, if you really fooled with it, get it adjusted and squeeze it in there. But again, if it's got a rubber cape, it's gonna be much more difficult to get in that little cockpit. And then finally, because I'm sure some of you are going to ask, this is the NECA seven inch scale Michael Keaton Batman figure. And while technically you can get him inside the cockpit, you really can't close it because of the way, how high the ears stick up on this figure. So if you just wanted to sit him in there and display him like this, you certainly could, but don't expect to get the canopy closed. Okay, so once your battery is fully charged, you wanna hook it up. So what you wanna do is first thing is you have to remove the cover. It requires a Phillips head screwdriver. You got a little screw here. So you just unscrew it and remove this. And then you wanna take your battery and just plug it in here to the connector. You wanna make sure the little clips are on this side so that it clips over and hooks in. And then once you do, you wanna just tuck the battery in and then you have to kinda of tuck the, the cables in there. It's probably better to turn it this way. And then once you get the wires tucked in there, you put the cover back on. Now, one thing I do want to note here, and this is important because if you ever, once you upload the app and sync it with your, your Batmobile and everything, if you ever decide you want to switch to a different application and upload the app to a different phone or iPad or something along those lines, you are going to have to do what's called a factory reset. Otherwise, it won't accept the password that it gives you when you try and sync it up to the second device. Basically, you can only have it synced up to one device at a time. And the only way to basically have it forget the original device you synced it up with is do the factory reset. So you'll notice there's a little hole over here 
and you'll need a, a pin or a paper clip or something and you'll stick it in there and push it in for 10 seconds and you'll, you'll do it while it's on. You want to make sure it's on and then you'll do it. You'll push this for 10 seconds and then you turn it off and turn it back on and that should reset it and then you can sync it up with a different device. I had to learn that the hard way. I finally found that information somewhere on Mattel's website but there's nowhere in the instructions about that or anything. So that definitely caused some frustration because I had synced, I had synced it up with a device that didn't have cellular connection and so when I went to switch it to a different phone that has cellular connection which is something you'll need if you want to take this like outside or what have you and, and control it then then um, I ran into that problem so I just wanted to make sure you guys knew that again it's not very clear in the instructions or anything but if you want to you know sync it up to a different device at some point make sure you do the hard factory reset Okay, so once you have the battery cover back on, what you need to do is you've got to turn it on because your phone can't actually sync up with it without it being on. And so in order to turn it on, what you do is there's a power switch here on the bottom. It's just a little black switch and you just pop it on and it'll sound like it's actually a car starting up. And then the engine will just idle. Then once you do that, you can go into your phone's Wi-Fi settings and it should detect the Batmobile. And at this point, you'll want to sync it up if you haven't already. If you've already synced it, then all you have to do is just connect to the, to the Batmobile uh, Wi-Fi network. And then once you do that, you'll open up the app and you'll get the little introduction screen. And then it should take you to the control screen. And this is how you control it. So you've got two ways of viewing it. This is the actual camera view. And I'm actually, we're gonna turn that off for now. This little icon up here in the corner activates the camera. But if you just wanna control it normally when it's in your sight and everything, this is the screen you'll see. So you see this little digital image of the Batmobile and it just kind of spins around. These controls down here at the bottom that show weapons, these can activate sound effects for the different weapons on the Batmobile. So you've got this one, which is for the larger cannon up here on the passenger side. Sounds like a big mortar cannon or something. Then this one controls the Gatlin guns here. So you can see these will actually turn and it sounds like machine gun fire. And then the final one is your front missile launcher. Okay, so now these controls over here operate other functions on the Batmobile. So this first one, which looks like a little cannon with an arrow pointing up or down, will elevate this big cannon in the passenger seat. So if you hit it once, it goes up. And then you can, of course, fire it this button over here and then if you hit it again it goes down now one thing I've noticed at least with mine after you go through that cycle of doing it up once and once down if you don't just kind of push it in manually with your hand it'll quit working so I'll show you up down but if I don't manually now push it in it's just gonna kind of pop out so it's some kind of design flaw, I think. I don't know, it's like the elevation kind of forces it up and out of the little clip that, that holds onto it. So all you have to do is just kind of push it in manually, but you're only gonna get about one up and one down before it kind of pushes out like that. Now other features that this thing has is you've got hydraulics which will lift it up. So this one that looks like a little gear uh, wheel with an arrow pointing up or down. So that's supposed to be like if you're going to go up jumps or something like that, you want to like elevate the wheels a bit. I don't know if it really does anything to be honest, but it does give you that effect. This one that looks like a cloud, that one activates the exhaust feature. So you got to make sure you have the smoke solution in there, which you can get if you run out. They say you can get at hobby shops and such. And you hit the little cloud. The little, little red light will come on and it'll start putting out exhaust. 
And then the final one here, which looks like a sun, activates the lights. Okay, now I've turned down some of the lights so that you can see the light up feature on the vehicle better. So again, you've got these front headlights and then you've got these orange lights down here near the wheels. And you also have some light up features inside the canopy for added effect. And you'll see here, there's the little camera lens here. And this is how, you, if you go to the other view mode, which I'll show you in a few minutes, this is how you, this is where you're seeing from, this little camera here. So if you have the figure in there when you're trying to drive it, make sure you're not covering up that little camera inside there. And then also you probably want to take off this uh, canopy piece and, and take it off altogether. It's actually listed as something as a feature being able to remove it. And I guess at some point in the movie, it maybe gets blown off or something. Now in order to make this thing move, you've got these two slide functions. So this one over here, which uh, you do it forward and back, moves your wheels. Also when your wheels move, the cannons, these front cannons and this missile launcher kind of move with the wheels. It, they don't move a lot, especially the front missile launcher. It only moves a little bit. They, these cannons up here move a little bit more, but that is something that it's supposed to do is move with the wheels. And then to get it to move forward and backwards, you do this one up. You hear the engine kind of rev up. I'm not going to do it too much here on the table because I don't want it going flying off. But that's basically how you make it move. And I will say that this thing does, is not very good at turns. It does not make sharp turns at all. You probably are gonna to wanna to use this either outside or if you've got a room with really nothing in it and a lot of space, like maybe a basement or a garage or something along those lines, a gymnasium maybe, then you could probably do it indoors. But you're not gonna be able to really use this very effectively in just like your bedroom or in an area with a lot of furniture and stuff, I don't think. This thing is very big, it's very heavy, it does go pretty fast and you could actually do some damage to walls if you ran this thing into a wall at full speed. So again, I would definitely recommend if you're gonna use the remote control features, you use it in a space with a lot of room. Another thing I wanna note here, an original feature that was listed with this is the Batman figure was supposed to actually, if you have him grip the, the throttle here and the steering wheel, it was supposed to look like he was actually driving the Batmobile, would kind of like move. And the steering wheel does move a little bit when you turn the wheels, but not too much. So really that figure does not move hardly at all. Okay, so we've moved outside and you can see I've got the Batmobile down there on the street and I've got the app. So I've got it set up on camera view so you can see what the Batmobile is basically seeing. So, you know, let you see. So, there it goes. As I mentioned before, this thing does not make sharp turns. I don't want to run into that car. Bring it towards us. So it definitely moves and gets up like the curb there. And you can even drive it. Now, admittedly, I'm not like an expert RC controller, but so you can see it actually goes through the grass too. Now they recommend, you know, don't drive through sand and things like that. But you can see it moves through the grass pretty nicely. Okay, so I've brought it in a little bit closer so you can get a little better view of it. So I brought it back inside. I wasn't sure how well you, the screen was showing up on the camera. So I just wanted to again show you the weapons and how it looks from the camera view when you fire the weapons. So again, you can see the big cannon firing from the passenger side, the muzzle shot, and the machine gun fire, and then the missile. 
with the missile you just see some smoke flying okay so that's my review so overall I'm a little torn on this one the positives I think are it definitely think it looks pretty good I think they did a good job overall of capturing the look of the vehicle from the movie it doesn't look quite as good as the one we saw at Toy Fair back in February they definitely removed some of the paint applications that were on the original prototype but still I think it looks pretty good the cockpit works well fits your figure well that comes with it also fits other six inch scale figures like the Dawn of Justice, Mafex Batman, and the 112 Collective Dawn of Justice Batman, and even your normal multiverse tech suit Justice League movie Batman will fit in there. And if you really wanted to, you can even get your Michael Keaton seven inch scale Batman figure in there as long as you don't have the canopy top on or closed. The lights and sounds of the more expensive version, the $250 one, this ultimate one, I think work pretty well. The gun sounds and everything work pretty well and I like how you can see the guns firing through the camera view. I also like the camera view of this one and how you can see from the driver's perspective. So if the Batmobile itself actually gets out of sight, you can still see where you're going. I definitely like that feature. The downsides though, this thing does not take turns well. It, it does not turn sharply. So you're, you're limited to where you can actually use this thing. I definitely would not recommend using it inside where there's tight spaces. This thing is big and it's heavy and it can move fast and it can do some damage to walls or small animals. So again, if you're gonna use it indoors, try and find a space with a lot of room like a basement or something along those lines or just take it outside. Now if you do take it outside then you do need to make sure that your your smartphone device or tablet or whatever has cell phone connectivity otherwise you're not going to be able to use it so that's a little bit of a downside and also it would have been nice if they had explained in the instructions about if you're going to upload the app to a second device how you have to do the factory reset and actually how to do the factory reset because that information was not readily available and it was very frustrating when I was trying to switch over to a different phone and, and trying to get that set up. Once I found out how to do it on their website, it, it wasn't that difficult. But definitely, you know, it would have been nice if maybe they had explained that in the instructions or told you where to go on the website to find that information. Overall, I would definitely recommend the, the $60 version, the one without the electronics and everything. If you're into six inch figures, then I think that one is a pretty cool toy. As far as this more expensive version, I, I really hard pressed to say that I find it's worth the $250. If you're really into you know remote control vehicles and you have the space to actually use a big one like this, then probably is more appealing. But otherwise, I'd probably just recommend you go with the $60 version. Now this is available now. You can pick it up at places like Amazon.com. Both this one and the $60 version are available now. We'll have a full image gallery up at ToyNewsEye.com. There'll be a link in the video description below. As always, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Also, please like the video if you're so inclined and hit that subscribe button down below. I'd really appreciate it. You can also follow me on my Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram accounts. I have links to those in the video description as well. And until next time, guys, I'll catch you later.